possible worlds and accessibility are as before. Uh, the, the, the new thing uh, is uh, this, which is a domain function. Uh, and it's uh, a varying domain function. It maps uh, possible worlds to non-empty sets. Uh, I'm assuming it's monotonic, so if you move to a, an accessible world, everything you had, you still have. Uh, the rest of this is the same forcing uh, uh, the truth that a world condition is arbitrary. Uh, that's part of your definition of a model. And beyond that, you calculate truth at worlds. So Boolean connectives behave in the usual fashion at each world. Uh, but uh, we, we need to define what it means for a formula phi to be true at gamma in such a model. Uh, and all the conditions are exactly as they are in the modal case, except what's the quantifier condition look like. Um, so phi here is a first order formula, no free variables, but it can contain members of the domain. I said before I would put members of the domain into formulas. Uh, the, the domain of the model is, uh, it just lump all the domains of the worlds together. So th members of the domain can appear in a formula, even if they're not in the, the, the world that you're evaluating the formula in. So we can, standard example, we can talk about Pegasus in this world, even though he doesn't exist in this world. Uh, so the question is, how is this to behave? Uh, at the atomic level, it's arbitrary. You have the Boolean conditions. And this is the quantifier condition. For all x, phi of x is true at gamma. If well, what I uh, want to say is every instance of it is true at every accessible world. So uh, for every delta that's accessible from gamma, and for everything in the domain of delta, phi of that thing is true at delta. So you've lost a quantifier and instead gained instantiations. But the instantiations are local because different worlds can have different domains. Uh, okay, the, uh, I defined exists to be not for all not. And what this gives you is exists x, phi of x is true at gamma if there's some accessible world and something in the domain that this formula is true of at that world. So there's actually two sums here. There's some accessible world, and there's some thing in that domain. OK. Uh, truth for formulas with free variables is a derivative notion, and we won't need it very much. Uh, but uh, I'll say a formula with free variables is true at a, a world if each instance available at that world is true there. A formula is valid. Uh, in a model if it is true at each of the possible worlds. Okay, so now we have a semantics. Uh, this semantics for QK. So QK has no special conditions on the accessibility relation. A QD model uh, will require ser seriality. Every world has a world accessible uh, from it. QT uh, will require a reflexive, exactly like D into T. Um, and we've got notions of validity for that. So, uh, all right, well, so I, I, let's start here. Uh, first, let me show you an example of a validity argument. Uh, the, for all x, phi implies psi. Well, OK, that for all distributes across an implication. I want to show that's valid. So suppose you have a model and a world in it where this isn't true. So this fails at gamma. Uh, well, then the antecedent is true at gamma. But this antecedent, this antecedent is true, but that consequent is false. Uh, because if this is false, there has to be an accessible world and something in that world that makes psi false there. Uh, so for some delta uh, and, and something in the domain of delta, psi of c fails at, at delta. But for all x, this implication is true at gamma. So at delta, 
every instance available at delta has to be true because delta was accessible. So phi of c implies psi of c is true. Same thing for all x phi of x. Every instance has to be true at every accessible world. So phi of c is true at delta. So at delta, you've got phi of c implies psi of c, and you've got phi of c. So you've got psi of c, but up there you didn't. So this is a contradiction. So there can't be a world where this, this uh, implication fails. So that's an argument for, the, for its validity. Um, and in fact, uh, you can easily verify that all of the QK axioms are valid, that the rules preserve validity, and so you've got a soundness result. Anything provable is, is valid. Um, so that's the soundness side. Uh, and you can do the same thing with QT, D and QT, the, uh, seriality and uh, uh, reflexivity give you exactly what you need. Uh, we don't need completeness yet. If I can show you a QK model where something fails, then it can't be provable in QK. Soundness is enough for that. So uh, here's, here's a very simple example, and it's a, an example you probably all know. Take a, a one-world model uh, with nothing accessible to it. It's not even accessible to itself. Uh, then at that model, at that world, rather, this is true, uh, but the existential is not. See, why is this true? Uh, because show me an accessible world where the, an instance fails. There aren't any accessible worlds, so the universal quantification is true. But to show you how the existential, you would have to have an accessible world and an instance that held. Uh, this is, in a, in a modal case, this is essentially the same way you show uh, box doesn't imply diamond uh, in K. You just take a one world model with no accessibility holding. Uh, all right, so um, for all x phi implies exists x phi is not uh, provable in QK. Uh, here's a QD example. Uh, this is a little more complicated. Uh, so remember in QD, every world has to have some world accessible from it. So gamma has delta, delta has omega, omega has itself. I'm not assuming transitivity here. Uh, but this makes it a QD frame. Uh, yeah, each world has to have a domain associated with it. Uh, for that, it's A. For this, it's AB. For this, it's ABC. Uh, so we've got monotonicity. Uh, and I want to specify which formulas are true and which are false at the atomic level, and that'll finish defining the model. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm only looking at a one two-place relation symbol. Uh, so P uh, of AA, BAC, BAB, BC all hold here. In other words, uh, A and B are related to anything at this world, but C is not. Uh, well, that makes both of these true here. Uh, for all Y, P of A, Y is true here because every instance of it down here is true. This is the only world accessible from this. The same thing for the other one. Uh, and that makes for all x, for all y, p of x, y true up there, because every instance of it down here uh, is true. There are only the a and the b instances, and we just verified those. So at gamma, that's true. p of c, b is not true down here. I left it out of the things that are true, and so I'm putting it in the false column now. Uh, these two don't really matter. Do anything you want with them. Uh, that means this is false here, because if it were true, every instance of it would have to be true down here, but this instance isn't. So this one fails here, and then this one fails up here. Same sort of argument. So you see what you've got. For all x, for all y is true here, but for all y, for all x is false here. So your quantifiers don't commute. So this is not provable in QT. Uh, it's also not provable in QT. 
but you have to fuss with the model a little. I'll leave that to you. You can turn in the papers when you leave. Um, so what about completeness? Uh, okay, I assume you've all seen proofs of completeness for axiomatic modal logics. Uh, what you do is construct a canonical model. Uh, in it, uh, your possible worlds are all your maximally consistent sets. Uh, to define the accessibility relation for each possible world, that is for each maximally consistent set, uh, each gamma, define a gamma sharp to be all the x's that are necessary at gamma. So just, uh, and then accessibility, uh, delta is accessible from gamma if gamma sharp is, accessible, is a subset of delta. So that defines an accessibility relation. At the atomic level, uh, take P to be true at gamma if it's one of the formulas in gamma. And then the standard result is the truth lemma. In the model that I just defined, uh, a formula of any sort works out to be true at gamma exactly when it's a member of gamma. Most of the steps of that are uh, very simple. There's one that requires some work, and uh, I don't think I put it, yeah, I didn't put it on the slides here. Uh, if you've seen it, fine. If you haven't seen it, take my word for it. Uh, all right, but so since this thing winds up being a model, uh, if x is not provable, there's a maximally consistent set that leaves it out. And that's also a possible world, and it will be false at that possible world in the model. So that's, that's the, how you prove completeness. Um, well, completeness for QK is along the same lines with some fuzzing. Um, but we need Henkin witnesses. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with the, the, the term, um, exists x phi of x. Suppose I have that. Uh, OK, let's introduce a c to be something having the property phi. So we'll introduce c and say phi holds of it. And that's called the Henkin witness to the existential quantifier. Um, so we'll need those. So take the language we had and add new variables, because the ones we have are already used for things. Uh, these are going to be uh, variables for <coughs> serving as Henkin witnesses. I'll call them parameters. And I'll make the point of I'll never quantify them. So in effect, they don't look like constants to the, the outside world. Um, OK, so there's one, one condition here. Uh, before it was just maximally consistent sets. Now you have these parameters running around the place. And you want to make sure no uh, one of your maximally consistent sets uses up all the parameters. You want to always have more for other worlds. So uh, a possible world now is going to be a maximally consistent set of formulas in this logic QK that leaves out infinitely many parameters. That's, that's it. So it's just like before, maximally consistent. It can involve parameters, but it has to omit infinitely many of them. Um, so uh, as the, associated with each uh, of these possible worlds, we have to have a domain. And that's going to be the set of parameters that turn up there. Uh, we need to say which atomic formulas are true at which worlds. Well, I'll say an atomic formula is true at a world if it's one of the members of it, exactly like in the modal case. Uh, we need, ex uh, oh, did I, I, I left out the definition of uh, accessibility. Let's see. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's here. I just may have gone past it. I did leave it out. Uh, I, last night, I uh, rearranged some of the slides. So I'm sorry, I must have taken this one out. So I assume you can all make it up for yourselves. Uh, 
No, uh, the, 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 the definition is really very simple. Uh, remember that sharp operation. So uh, you drop boxes. Well, dropping a box now becomes instantiation. So uh, delta is accessible from gamma if for every universally quantified formula in gamma, all of its delta instances uh, are in delta. So all of the instances of that formula that involve parameters of delta are actually in delta. So it's the exact parallel of the uh, sharp operation I had for this. So, with all of that, uh, we have a, what's called the QK canonical model. And again, exactly like before, you can pr prove a truth lemma. Truth at a world is equivalent to being one of the formulas in the set that makes up the world. Uh, it's, it's almost the same as uh, the modal proof. And I'm, I'm, skip the details, partly because I skipped the modal details. Uh, but now the ex existential step, uh, when a universally quantified thing isn't true at a world, there has to be an alternate world where that formula fails, uh, an, an instance of that formula fails. Uh, that will involve the introduction of a Henkin constant. This is why you always needed some extra ones around. So. If a universally quantified formula isn't in a set, you can create an alternative set where an instance of it fails. All right, so that gives you completeness for QK. And in the same way, you can get completeness for uh, uh, these. Are, it says KD and KT. It should be Q, QD and QT. Uh, all right. So what about full?